Hey, hey everybody. Um, we're going to talk to Kane here. We're at the KT booth with the highly anticipated new foil lineup from KT. So super excited to talk to Kane about this. Yeah, super excited to share. It's been a journey, um, and I'm excited that you know everything's kind of finalized and we're able to show it. Um, and the, the feedback we've been getting has been really awesome. Um, we have two ra or three ranges, um, two with kind of this unique, you know, rear-loaded high camber wing shape, and one that is more beginner-oriented. Um, so there's the Atlas, the Nomad, and the Instinct. So the Atlas is our higher aspect, um, 11 AR kind of surf downwind shape. Um, we have the Nomad. It's a nine-ish aspect ratio. Um, more focused at surfing, um, winging, like intermediate winging or choppier conditions. Um, I love it for steep waves or foil drive or anything where you want a really solid, reliable feel. Um, the Instinct is, is our beginner slash progression specialist. Um, we want something that can, that you can foil with your eyes closed. Um, people who are, you know, learning their jibes, learning to get up and just want something that they can progress really quickly on. Um, we'll love that foil. So looking at how you guys designed all the different connection pieces, um, so maybe let's start with the, the mass connection. Yeah, let me grab the fuse. Sure. So, starting with the mass connection, all, all the connections are kind of a foot-based bolted cell connection. Um, what I like about this style of connection is it gives a really, really solid, reliable connection. Um, we put a ton of work into it. Um, one of the factors was making sure that, say, potentially you can go to a carbon fuse in the future. We wanted this connection uh, system to be super future-proof, super reliable, um, and super strong. Three M8, all M8 bolts, three on the mast, two on the front wing. Um, all stainless steel inserts, so no corrosion there, no stripping. Okay. And everything is nice and beefy. Um, you're not, you are not going to bend this fuselage. <laughs> it's crazy. Um, yeah. I'm assuming you guys have tried. We, yeah, yeah we try pretty hard. <laughs> and yeah, when designing it, I, I, I've broken so much stuff that <laughs> I kind of know where the limit is. And I use that as a reference and, and, you know, design the, design this very carefully to make sure that we're far away from that. <laughs> So is that sitting, because this is unique, right? There's yeah. a little bit of a set-in and same thing with this attachment right here? Yeah, they work off of pretty much the same concept. 30 millimeter wide foot and M8 bolts. The torque keeps the thing from moving. Um, why, the reason we have these, uh, I don't know what to call it. I guess I can call it a, a spine or a ridge um, on the front is to increase the amount of threads um, and increase the overall thickness and strength of the fuselage. Um, most aluminum fuselages, or fuselages in general when they break, are going to break right at this rearmost hole, right? And so having this extra material and having these extra threads not having to drill as deep really increases the strength of the uh, cross section right here. Um, on this side, we just the foot alone is fine, but we want something extra to help resist um, where the bolts are weak. So that would be in, in shear. Um, so torsion on this connection. Um, say you hit, you hit a rock or something really hard with the end of your wing. We don't want those bolts to shear off. Um, and say if you hit something straight on, Sam, you want, you want some extra, extra meat there to save you some extra stability. Um, same thing also. You can get a few extra threads on, say, the aluminum parts. And let's take a look just how the tail, so that's... Yep, super simple tail connection. Um, we we notch it out so that the tails can sit in there with a flush leading edge. Um, and I also leave... There's also enough room in here for shimming, our shim system, so that no gaps are created at the leading edge, creating extra drag. Um, 
Okay. This is two M6. Um, M6 just works better for the tails. Um, the heads don't take up as much of the wing surface. Okay. Now this is an aluminum. Yeah. Um, I'm assuming you have carbon. So well. we do not have carbon this year. Okay. Um, all the few, there, we have two aluminum fuselages. We have a 63 and a 56. Okay. Um, they're they're measured end to end, so our the measurement is slightly shorter than other brands. It's more comparable to like a 60 and a 65 for most other brands. Um, the reason I ch I wanted to go with aluminum is well, well the main reason is reliability. Um, I don't want to. It would take a ton of time and effort um, to make a carbon fuselage that is as strong as this. Mm -hmm. um, and it would have to be solid. And overall, I kind of just like aluminum better <laughs> for this case, for an assemblable foil. I definitely okay. would like carbon if we, say, went to a monocoque style system. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's where a carbon fuselage shines. But for this assemblable t type of connection, you know, in like thread inserts and weird cross sections in here, um, the aluminum is, is simple, reliable, um, just works. Okay, no, that that's good to know, and it's good for people as well yeah. to know. Yeah. Now, obviously, you're gonna get this question. Mm -hmm. You guys decided to wait. Can we go into a little bit about why? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you know, we're just too busy surfing. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can. I guess I um, can see that. <laughs> the reason we the the reason it took a while is because we wanted to make like the, the most important part of any foil is the connection system. Mm -hmm. If you have a bad connection system. You are, it might be good now, but you're going to screw yourself in the next few years when you want to, you say that your wing designs change or you want to play with different constructions. Um, say, like you said, a carbon fuselage. Um, mm -hmm. Some of the connections we had before were working amazing with what we have right now, but we want something that's going to work amazing with what we have in five years. Um, and so that's why we put more energy and effort into the connection system. Okay, that makes sense as well. Now, we did have some questions about the cross sections. Of the front wings. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah so pretty unique cross sections, um, airfoils on the Atlas and Nomad. Um, it's a bunch of, bunch of R&D, bunch of optimization time, <laughs> um, a bunch of testing behind it. I, it's something I didn't think would work when I saw the first saw the simulation results, but as you can see, they are ridiculously cambered in the rear. Um, this is called a rear-loaded airfoil. It's also a bottom, very heavily bottom-loaded, bottom surface-loaded airfoil. And what this gives you is essentially free range. So think about on an airplane putting the flaps on. You massively extend your low speed, uh, like your, your your stall resistance. Um, you can go much slower without stalling. Um, on an airplane, it also <laughs> reduces the top end. And so, what we did on this, or what I what I what I focused on, is by creating a very symmetrical. Actually, in the in the first ten percent, it's perfectly symmetrical leading edge. Um, you can retain the top end, the top speed of the foil, while using the back half to increase the low end. Um, it's a weird compromise. They don't use it on airplanes because of its increased pitching moment. But on a foil, most of our pitching moment is coming from the mat, the lever, the drag of the foil and leverage of the mast. This is a smaller effect. Um, so that's why we're able to make this compromise, and that's why it works so well. It's a bit complicated, but yeah, that overall is a, it, it gives you it gives you an extended speed range of the foil, so you get more bottom end for the same top end. Um, it lets you ride a smaller foil, which means less wetted surface in the water, which also helps with your glide and top end. It's yeah, okay. it's just an interesting balance of compromises that leads to a, a pretty cool result. Okay, can we take a look at your mast as yeah, well? Yeah, for sure. Any other questions, Max or Maxime, about this? <laughs> no, I mean, it's honestly, it, all this information is great. Like, <laughs> okay. Learning a lot here at Slayer Clinic. <laughs> yeah. So, to start out, we have three mass sizes. They're all straight, uh, like no zero taper, fifteen and a half millimeters thick, 
and they're using a blend of uh, standard and, and high modulus, um, exterior layers, high modulus, and interior standard. Um, the idea was to start with a mask that is going to be is going to perform great, be stiff enough for our wider front wings, and as well not be ridiculously expensive. Um, I didn't want to start with a you know multi thousand dollar mask, even though it would perform amazing. We're, we're um, just filming. Do you guys? Uh, I, just, I, I, I don't think yeah. it's going to be accessible. I like the sounds of uh, accessible. Yeah, and just you know wanted something that's going to be strong and and reasonably priced and last a long time. Um, I've been really liking it. Um, I guess other thing I would think of is, I think you can give us a rundown of rough ranges, um, size. Yeah, totally. Um, so in the Atlas, the Atlas is our biggest range. We have six sizes. Um, we have a five, 570 through 1340. Um, that yeah, 570 is great for like kite foiling, tow foiling, wing racing especially. Um, I use it for surf foiling on really good days, and it's all downwind foiling on really good days. We have all the way up similar shapes to the 1340, which is kind of based around getting people into downwind. Um, super easy to take off, not too spanny, so it's still manageable in some bumps. Um, and it works pretty well for flat water pumping, too. Um, for the Nomad range, we have four wings from 700 to 1180, 1160. Um, the 700 is kind of my s steep wave specialist, um, or choppy water wing specialist. Um, the Nomads have a little bit more sweep and are, you know, a little bit lower aspect ratio. They give you a super, uh, like stiff, responsive feel. Um, it's great for people, yeah steeper waves, bigger riders. If I want to go out, cruise, ride a little bit bigger foil with my, uh, in the waves and still surf, I ride like the uh, 980 Nomad. It's a blast. Okay. Do you um, have one that we can see? Yeah, we let me can grab see? one. Here. So here's the biggest one. It's the 1160. Um, the smaller ones are more swept back. Um, the reason for that is same same with the Atlas. As the as they get bigger, um, they're less turning focused and more glide and pumping focused. Um, and so reducing the sweep in the larger ones helps achieve that. Uh, one last question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sure. If you were to do a recommendation for, like, if you were to recommend a foil to the average person who's wants to get out, have a good time, and yeah. back, like, what would be your foil of choice you'd recommend? Ooh, okay. Good, good question. For, so, for winging, um, I really love the Nomad 830. Um, it's a foil you can use in almost anything and have a ton of fun on. Um, it's easy to ride. Um, yeah, super fun. For downwinding, probably the 790 Atlas. Um, that's kind of my one wing quiver for downwinding. Um, it's pretty fun in smaller waves too. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Um, hey. Yeah. A couple more things, sure. if you don't mind. Um, accessories. So the foil comes with a, you know, real simple box. Uh, this one's not full, but you get tools, your tail shims, and all the bolts for the foil. Um, it also comes with a one degree plate shim. Um, use this just tune for, you know, if you're riding on the low end or the top end of your foil, um, you know, trading, takeoff and pumping for, uh, extra pitch stability at speed. Okay. And, okay let's uh, take a look at your bags as well. Yeah. Just quickly. So here's the mask bag. Um, nice and durable. Simple Velcro connection, all Velcro. Um, just works. <laughs> Easy to protect your foil. And that's what we the want. The fuselage bag is nice because there's this little flap, so you can bag it all up when it's oh, put I together. Oh, I like that. That's, yeah. that's slick. I like okay. that because sometimes I'll put it in my car with a bunch of other gear, yep. and I don't want 
my gear to damage my other gear. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> being able to cover the entire thing is really nice. That's true. I noticed too, you guys do uh, Velcro on the side so you can actually keep your bag oh, yeah. together. I actually forgot about that. So the mask bag has Velcro. Um, you can pop your fuselage on there. Um, keep those together. Same thing with the tail wings. They fit right on. Um, I kind of like to keep my fuselage and mast together and my front and back wings together. So the front wing also has this. You can that's pop a, whatever you want on there. That's a cool concept. Yeah. yeah. I like that. It's nice. You can kind of pair things together yeah. and keep it organized. In my car right now, it's just like... <laughs> pile. <laughs> Me too. It's like Tetris. You're like, okay, I can squeeze this mass in here and then yeah. stack a bin on top of it. Yeah. Um, Any other points that we can think of, guys? Yeah, shim system. Okay, yeah. It's yes. going to be kind of interesting. Uh, so, the graphics are not on these wings, but all wings will have a graphic similar to this, outlining uh, the value in our shim system for each part. So, our masts and our front wings each have a value. These values are added together, and the resulting shim is used. So, Sam, I'm putting my my fill together, put everything together except for the tail, add those up, shim, tail, and no matter what combination of parts you put together, it's going to be perfectly tuned every time. Um, huh. You don't, it, it, it means that there's no guessing. It gives you the right, the right angle on the tail, the right shim to use, no matter what combination of parts. Um, okay. It's cool. It's actually, it's actually something that works on any foil. Okay. Um, it's kind of inherent to how foils work, um, just with balancing the drag and leverage on the mast. Um, anytime you change the drag or the leverage, the, the tail force needs to be changed as well. And uh, I've made some comp some some adjustments in the in the tail and fuselage design to reduce the amount of numbers <laughs> you need to add. <laughs> so simplified it down just to two numbers. Super simple. Um, tells you exactly what to do. Okay. All right. Well, hey, Kane, thanks for taking the time. Thanks so much. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And looking forward to trying these out. All right, guys.